Now, it might be my English upbringing and the impact of all those overcast, grey, drizzly days when I was growing up, but I can't get enough of super colourful skies. The problem is that all those lovely, natural, saturated colours photographed on my awesome Fujifilm X-T4 represent a uniquely ironic post-processing dilemma. Pretty much any of the baseline adjustments you make to a photograph can increase saturation levels. And when the colour is already saturated to begin with, that means you can very easily end up with some nosebleed, acid nightmare of a photo that you'd even think twice about uploading to Instagram. It's not a good look. There is a solution, however, an incredibly useful slider that can save your photos from becoming a garish, oversaturated mess. Yes, friends, it's the retina saver you didn't know you needed. Welding goggles, not required. So, here's the problem. There is definitely such a thing as too much saturation. And allow me to demonstrate on this photograph that I took in the aftermath of a powerful little electrical storm that blew through the neighborhood just a couple of nights ago. You can see it's already quite a saturated image. And I'd just like to show you that I have not increased the saturation of sliders here saturation and vibrancy are both on zero and in fact if you look at the color temperature you can see i've actually tried to tone it down and cool the image down it was such a vibrant scene the problem is this pretty much any change that i make will further increase this already saturated image so for instance if i drop the highlight look at the saturation come up it's not necessarily a desirable outcome. Ditto, bring up the mid-tones, we're getting saturated. If I drop the blacks, we're getting oversaturated. Oh, let me think. I'd quite like to increase the contrast, but hold on, what's the side effect of that? Yes, oversaturation. Whenever you're editing a photo like this, you have to tread extremely carefully, lest anyone that's viewing the photo thinks they're having some sort of acid fever dream. Fortunately, the lovely folks at DxO created a time-saving tool specifically to manage this particular problem. And it goes by the name of the Protect Saturated Colors Slider. Let's jump back into Photo Lab and I'll show you how it works. So we've enlarged our photo a little bit, gone into 100% so we can better see the problem area. I've made some basic tweaks, the sort of tweaks I might make to any photograph, dropping the highlights, bringing up the mid slightly, raising the shadows and tweaking the black point in order to best get some nice color balance in the photo. But as you can see, these colors do look a bit like I've taken the saturation slider and turned it up to 11. I can fix that very simply in the DxO Photo Lab by going over to the Color tab and bringing up the Protect Saturated Color Slider. Keep your eye on the saturated portion of the photograph as I lift this slider. As you can see, it's slightly washed out the colors. So we've protected the saturated colors, but it's gone a bit too far, but it's a slider. So we can temper the effect. Let's bring that back slightly. And we can find the point, I think we're around about 70% there, where we have this nice balance of this beautiful, very natural looking saturation in the sky. And we've still got all the detail that we pulled back in the regular raw processing sliders. Yes, protect saturated colors to the rescue. The slider intelligently spots those color critical areas, keeps them in check while you edit. It's like having a safety net that catches all those red, blues, and greens before it looks like a unicorn threw up rainbow chunder all over your photo. If you don't use Photo Lab, then you can achieve the same effect, pulling back the saturation to achieve natural looking colors 
but it's a slightly more complicated and therefore time-consuming process. In apps like Capture One, you can select specific saturated colors and reduce them on a case-by-case -case basis. Make sure you use the old smoothness slider to control the transition between those desaturated areas and the rest of the image. In Lightroom Classic, you can use the HSL tool to target the colors that have been oversaturated and manually decrease saturation to compensate for the baseline raw edits you made. The color calibration panel in Lightroom Classic is another great way of controlling heavily saturated photos. Just drop the saturation slider on the primary color that's closest to the affected tones. When I first started processing raw photos a few decades ago, I usually ended up with very oversaturated images and like many of us, I cringe a bit when I see how saturated those shots look today. I realized now that the edits I was making, even though they weren't directly related to saturation levels, were adversely affecting global color levels. So just be aware, as you use those baseline sliders in your raw editor, highlights, black point, contrast, that saturation is being affected too. And that will do us for this special guide to the unappreciated Protect Saturated Colors slider. Are you a photo lab user? How do you correct for saturation shifts when you're doing your baseline edits? Let me know in the comment section below. If you got value from this content, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing for more photo, video, and drum related content from yours truly. Until the next time, guys, ta-ta.